Hey there Internet, I'm Michael and this is To Complete That Game with a review of Amasa Dragons. So what is Amasa Dragons? Well, it's a game from Sean Solo Games and let's take a look at the cover. So we have a giant gold coin being held by claws and there's dragons all around the outside. Doesn't really tell us much. Um, what the game is all about is dragons trying to amass the most treasure, to have the biggest hoard. It's all you taking on the role of a dragon, building up his hoard, you know, the bit that tends not to be focused on much. It tends to more be about the dragon already has the hoard and it's the hero taking that treasure. So why don't we take a look at the table and you can see how these dragons amass their hoards. The aim of the game is to get the most of these treasure coins here in your hoard, and they do have different values on them. You'll do this by taking turns. So each player will start the game with five equipment cards. So players can only have three pieces of equipment equipped at a time, and then on their dragon it tells them how many dice they roll for attack, what their speed is, so how many spaces they can move on a turn, and how many gold coins they can carry. So for this blue one here, has three dice for attacking, can move five spaces, and can carry up to six coins. So on a turn, you'll be moving around this board, trying to see what these encounter tiles are, and facing them. So you can only face a maximum of two encounters a turn, and you get extra dice if you're on your terrain. So the home tile always counts as their terrain, but for this blue dragon, deserts also count. You can move diagonally in this. So he's going to start by going one to here, and he'd turn over and look at this tile without showing it to his opponent. Now the number at the top here is how hard this creature is, how many dice it gets. And the number at the bottom is how much treasure you get. So he goes, okay, I'll face that encounter. He'll roll three dice to see what his result is. And his opponent will roll for the monster. And we see what their result is. You then compare. Whoever has the highest value wins. So in this case, the dragon lost. Which would mean they take a wound. And if you take a wound, you roll on the wound table. And it's going to half one of your stats. But let's say he won. For winning, he gets the treasure, if he, assuming he can carry it, and if he can't, it'll sit on the tile waiting for someone to pick it up, and he automatically gets two treasure into his hoard. He then marks it with a token to say he's beaten it. If you beat all four of the encounters that are on a large tile, you mark that tile and you get an extra five coins. You'll carry on taking turns, fighting all the different creatures that there are, rolling your dice to beat them, taking wounds, going back and forth, marking off as you go, until all of these little tiles have been turned over and marked off as completed by one player or another. At which point you just count up treasure, and any treasure that you are carrying immediately goes into your hoard, whoever has the most treasure in their hoard, wins the game. So that is a mass of dragons. What do I think? Well, let's first talk about the artwork. Now, I am mad about dragons, so it's artwork with dragons in, and of course, I'm instantly going to fall in love with it. But not all of it. I mean, the box here, for example, I'm not too keen on. But then you look at things like in the instructions here, this cute little baby dragon that I fall in love with. You know, some of these cards, are quite bland and boring, whereas others are really nice, interesting fantasy artwork like that. And then, you know, you've got all these different cards, but some look like this. It's just a staff. Very boring. Let's see if we can find another interesting one, shall we? Uh, da -da -da -da. I'm sure there is going to be one here somewhere that uh, will be incredibly interesting to show you. There we go. So we've got a dragon guy, I want more treasure! You know, it's cute, it's lovely. And I really enjoy that artwork, and there's quite a lot of that sort of stuff carrying through. I mean, you've got the artwork of the dragons is really nice, just on the standees, and then it's matched on the dragon's cards. And then you've got the dragon's tiles, have the dragons on even larger, so it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and better. It's really nice. Now, the other tiles are a bit bland on artwork, but not bad. 
they, you know, they're okay, they do the job, they get across the different terrains, which is fine. So, yeah, I mean, the little tiles, again, is kind of quite nice artwork. I like the artwork. There'll be people out there who hate it. Now, I think that's probably enough on that. So let's move on to components. There are a ton of components in this game, so it's kind of like, oh, uh, where to start? Well, where would you start when you're picking up a game? The rule book. So let's start with that. I hate giant rule books. It's big. It's unwieldy. But actually, otherwise, this is actually a good rule book other than the size. It's clear, it's easy to follow, and it tells you how to play the game. Just what you want from a rule book. What about the other components? Well, there's a big ton of dice because, frankly, this is a dice chucking game. They're fine, plain D6s, nothing special about them. The cards, huge, giant stack of cards, tons of them, to give tons of variation. But the actual quality of them is just, meh, okay. The little coin tokens are horrible. They are absolutely terrible quality. I mean, they're bits falling off. Hor Ugh. Just disgusting. I mean, if you're going to get this game, try and find a different way to do the money, frankly. Then you've got the standees. You know, it would be nice to have miniatures, but I can understand why they've not done that. Hugely more expensive. The artwork on these is nice. They're functional, good standees. Now let's talk about the cardboard. The little cardboard tiles, the encounter tiles, a good heavyweight card, as are the big tiles. So that's all good component-wise there. Now, there's a couple more components to talk about. And these are much more, I don't know why they've done this, they're very much look to be generic bought-in components. That's these dice cups, which are absolutely horrible. Um, I mean, they take all the enjoyment out of rolling the dice. There's no real need to have a cup. Um, yeah, and they're just this horrible hard plastic. They look like they've been tr made to try and look like they've got sewing on the edge. Ugh, I hate them. But you know, you might like them. And then the most interesting thing is these tiddlywinks. And yes, they're exactly tiddlywinks. I mean, look! Tiddlywinks! Let's see if I can hit the camera. I'm not doing very well. Ah, never mind. You get the idea. They are tiddlywinks. Okay, they're for marking things. You could have used anything. Why wide coloured tiddlywinks that don't associate to the dragons, don't associate to the theme, don't associate to the artwork? Yeah. But, you know, this is all just components. How important is it really? You can always pimp the game with your own components. Well, Let's talk about what really is important, and that is the gameplay. This is a Meritrash, pure and simple. It is luck heavy, skill light, you know, you've got the luck of going in the right direction to find the right tiles that you can actually face, then you're rolling fistfuls of dice to actually see what the result is. So much luck in this game. You've got luck of what cards you get, and these aren't balanced. Some of these are amazing, and some of them are just meh. So there is so much luck in this. If you want an Ameritrash game with a dragon theme, with nice artwork, then this is a game to try. If you're after something more strategic, yeah, maybe not really. So uh, what do I think? Well, I enjoy it. Would I play it that often? No, I think the lack of strategy there, the fact that it is so much dice chucking, it is a fun little game. But it just... I love the dragons, I love playing as a dragon, you know, going, I'm the evil dragon, I'm going to do all the evil things, I'm the good dragon, I'm going to do the good things. It can be interesting, but it doesn't necessarily fit into the game. And then the fact that it is so luck heavy, Gives it a lot of variation, a lot of replay value maybe, but at the same time there's not enough choices there. Yes, you're choosing when to use your cards, you're choosing when to choose to take on an encounter, but then the result of all of this tends to come down to luck. Really heavily down to luck. And unfortunately it's not a quick enough game, in my opinion, to warrant that amount of luck, and that's why I probably won't play it much. 
But if you are a fan of dragons and you want to take on the role of a dragon, you know, doing take that stuff to your opponent, collecting your treasure, fighting your treasure, and yes, there is fighting. It can be quite direct head to head. In fact, the game kind of encourages it because attacking the other player gives much greater rewards than just going and doing the encounters. And so by attacking another player, you could just choose to ignore each other, kind of take that out, but by attacking another player, you are more likely to win. And if you've got something that means you're better at attacking other players than they do, it can make it a bit unbalanced and a bit mean and aggressive as a game. Okay, so what are my final summary on this? Good, fun game. If you don't mind a bit of aggression and you want a just fun, light dice chucking without really much thought having to go into it. Okay, that is my thoughts on a mass of dragons from Sean Solo Games. I do hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family. And do also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.